This is One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. This is One on One. Today it's special, one on two. Let me introduce our very special guest. Uh, John Pizzarelli, a uh, fabulous jazz guitarist, vocalist, and uh, you know this guy next to you? I'm very familiar with his work. <laughs> and uh, this is Bucky Pizzarelli at 87 years young, uh, great jazz guitarist. He did not, did he teach you? No. Uh, sort of. It was mostly, uh, I learned by sitting with him on the bandstand. It was trial by fire. He would just play melodies and stare at me. And, and you didn't force him? No. Because? He stole everything from me. He stole everything. <laughs> it's easier that way. It's cheaper. <laughs> By the way, you guys uh, have been the best for so long. I was just telling you before we got on the air, I saw you at a club that doesn't even exist. We're downtown Newark a few years back on a Valentine's Day show, right? Mm -hmm. With WBGO? Yes. Jazz station right next door. I saw years back, you've been performing. When did you start performing? Oh, when I was 17, I went, with, uh, went away with uh, Bob Monroe's band. Uh... That was senior year high school. That was not my. That was my last two weeks of high school. I was on Christmas <laughs> vacation, and uh, Vaughn got a 4F and his, uh, his his physical, and he got the band back together. And there was a lot of chairs empty, you know, because the guys went in different directions. So, Did so they you called love, me. I'm sorry for interrupt, Bucky. Yeah. Did, was there, what was it about the guitar that you loved then and still love now? Well, I like the acoustic sound of the guitar. Uh, you know, that's the most important thing of, of, of uh, playing the guitar, is, is producing a good sound from an acoustic guitar, not an electric. Not, did either one of you play electric at any point? Oh, we do now. Oh, yeah, we I do mean, now. But he uses it in a sense, the way we play it is sort of, it still just sounds like you're, you know, amplifying the acoustic sound of the guitar. We don't yeah. use it so much that it sounds electric, I yeah. think. Yeah, could only hope. I played before the amplifiers were around. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. why. <laughs> well, you know what's interesting? Now, you, you never, the singing part was never it for you? No, no, no. When did you know you had the voice? When I heard him sing. <laughs> <laughs> when did you know he had the voice? Bucky, when did you know that your kid had a good voice? No, I heard him sing, you know, and he, he wrote a couple of songs, and he used to sing them, and he made a few demos, and he sounded good. You mind if I plug your CDs? You're, Please, you don't mind. That's plug okay. away. It's public television. We Buy can in bulk. <laughs> but one of my favorite of all time, Let There Be Love, John Pizzarelli. And Double Exposure? That's the current one, yeah. What do you love about this one, Double Exposure? I like the mix between jazz and the pop song. So it's sort of uh, the songs that he heard us playing in the basement, we put a jazz treatment to on this yeah, record. I have some uh, 78s in the car. <laughs> They're slightly cracked. <laughs> They're slightly cracked. Otherwise, I would have had something. Look, i got to ask you something about you guys. <laughs> we were, before we were coming in here to do the show, right? It's a little bit of lunch, lunch break. We do a bunch of shows here at our great partners at the Performing Arts Center. And and I saw a crowd gathering, and I hear some music, and I'm thinking, what's going on? And the two of you are in the green room, right? Right. Um, but you're there with this other guy. He's actually over here at Grover Kemble, right? Mm -hmm. Who we, one of the other guys who was performing here. The three of you are sitting there playing. Yeah. Right? And this was not a scheduled gig. <laughs> yeah. And nobody was paying to listen. How does something like that happen? Well, we, I worked with Grover 30 years ago, and we worked all the time together, and uh, he happened to be here. I didn't know it was him until I walked in, and oh my God, next yeah, thing you know, I we took all the too. guitars out and started to play. But how does that, how does it happen? It, and it doesn't always happen, obviously. Well, but the music business does that. You know, you can go somewhere to a city, and all of a sudden you find somebody that does what you do. You're more often run into those guys in airports than That's you are right. on bandstands. <laughs> so when you get to s actually sit with somebody, you want to play a song or two. You know what's so interesting, you know, as I followed, your career and, and known about you for so long, your career as well. Performing together as father and son, what's it like for you to be together? Biggest thrill of my life. Talk about it, Bucky. <laughs> well, you know, we know each other, and uh, I know where he's going, and he knows where I'm going, so we, we meet, and the music comes out. Go ahead. Well, that's, I agree. That's the, you can't say it any better than that. And he you said once, uh, you can't beat blood. <laughs> and we love, we, uh, we, blood I, that says sometimes doesn't always, you know. But you know, the, the, musical, the, blood Jacksons, our, right? the musical blood in our family <laughs> was so, uh, his uncles played banjos, taught him, they same guys who taught me when I was very young. So uh, it was, and music was always for fun. And so we don't really know yeah. that we're doing it, it was for a living. Sunday, every, every Sunday at our house with my two uncles and then we were watching and then I, I learned a few chords and I showed him and then we all joined in. Hold on. Sunday? Every Sunday. At the Pizzarelli's? Yeah. Music? Yeah. After and food. dinner? 
Food, food first. Food, food, food was first. Food first. Sacrilegious. Don't screw around. That's that. right. Okay. <laughs> and where'd you guys grow up? Patterson. Patterson. I did. You know, he was born in Patterson. Describe Patterson back in the Patterson's day. Patterson's a great, great city. A silk city of the world at mm. that time. And I was going to Central High School. I learned a lot of music from, from being in high school. Mm. And we had a little band, unauthorized band. We'd play after school and before school. And we played every, every function. And I, I was the happiest guy in the world. <laughs> did you ever think, though, it's so interesting, making a career, making a living, making a good living. Right? That's right. One of the hardest things you bet. ever in this industry. Yeah. Describe it for folks who say, yeah, I want to do what that guy does. Well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not just the hours on the bandstand. It's the hours at home playing the guitar. I mean, he sits in front of a, a small table every day from like 7 in the morning with all sorts of different songs on, on the table playing the guitar every morning. My son has said to me, you know, I was staying overnight there and I watched Pop-Up sit in front of that table and he's got all those songs. It's amazing. Still, still every day looking, you know, you go over, he goes, I got a new song. Look at I, or this is another one. I got another one that I, now I change these chords. It's much better. Let me get this straight. So for people, Bucky, who sit there and go, oh, so you're 87, you've been doing it for a few years, right? 70 years. Okay, they go, so? He's on autopilot. He wakes up, <laughs> he does his thing, no practice involved. Couldn't be no, further from the truth. It's not pra it's practice, it's playing the guitar, not, not playing scales and all that stuff. It, it, you take a song and you try to get a different chord here and there. Maybe one chord makes a big difference. What do you mean one chord makes a, a big difference? A different substitute chord, we call them. You know, you, you can play, play the song the way it's written, but sometimes you can play a song, and if you add a certain chord, it changes the meaning of the song, even just the melody. You go, oh, wow. It gives it a more emotional yeah. lift if you find some interesting chords on, on the melody. Let me ask you something for you, though, John. You, people know you from a lot of different venues. Commercials, no? One com big yeah, commercial, yeah. the Foxwoods commercial. Big. Yeah, How seven that years. I, uh, I sang the jingle. I didn't even know I was going in. I mean, they called me to do it. I played the guitar. They said, no, we want you to sing it. I sang it. And uh, the guy, the, pr the director said, you should do this commercial. You should be in this. And I literally went, yeah, all right. Yeah, I should. I should call my people. And by the time I got home, I had a phone call. They said, they want you to do the commercial. Six weeks later, I did the commercial up at Foxwoods, and it ran for seven years. And then I would always know where fans of either the Red Sox or the Yankees were around the country, because they'd say, why do I know you? I said, You're the Foxwoods guy. You're the Foxwoods guy. How great. It was great. And you know, it's funny. You could plan for all these things in your career, and? Never know. Stuff happens. That's right. right. You always got to be ready. You got to be ready. <laughs> say that secret. part. It's important for you people. You always have to be ready. For? for whatever happens. You know, in that case, they wanted me to be me. They would sing the way you sing, do the thing. So all that work turned into a, a nice seven years out of that. I just like when people say, do that thing you do. I know. <laughs> it is <a> very important. <laughs> um, by the way, our friend Joe Piscopo is waiting to come on. Oh, right? oh after this, great. That's the hey, Joe, do that thing you do. Right, right. <laughs> um, let me ask you something. Is there anything about being an Italian that has anything to do with this, Italian families? I think uh, it is. It does have a lot to do because we learned uh, the beauty of the playing the guitar in the family. And when we made music, it was for the whole family. And we played a lot of Italian songs. And we did, we did the, what you would do to entertain yourself. It was during the Depression when we, we were doing this. Right. And, uh, and it, it, it's a different phase of, of my career is that I, I learned how to play uh, in a big band from doing that. So who would you play the big band? Vaughn Monroe. And Benny right. Goodman later Benny on. Benny Goodman later on. Oh, Benny Goodman, I've heard that name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Influenced by Sinatra for you? More Nat King Cole for me. More, why Nat King Cole? His group that played at the Pier Hotel in the late 70s had piano, bass, and guitar, and I loved the sound of it. And he would say to me, you got to get those Nat Cole records. Those are the records. And they had the same setup yeah. with Nat Cole singing. And all those songs, I loved Route 66 and Frim Fram Sauce, and I Love You for Sentimental Reasons. Paper Moon. Paper Moon. They were all approachable for me. The Sinatra thing was like, who wants to sing witchcraft? Sinatra just sang it. Yes. You know, I felt intimidated by that. But the Nat Cole had the jazz element and the great yeah. songs. That did it for you, Nat King Cole. Me too. I loved that. Oh, in fact, I was in a service uh, during World War II, and on my way back from Europe, just as the war ended, we stopped at a rest camp, and I heard Paper Moon it was a V-disc, 
What does that mean, a V disc? They made them just for the. Uh, yeah, just they're for all veterans? made. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The guys disc. in the army, you could, they, they'd they send them over. They recreated for them. all the uh, big bands. Recreated, uh, recreated everything. Uh, the big band we made some with Vaughn Monroe right. for the for the troops. And I heard Nat Cole sing the Paper Moon. I said, get out of here. I said, I said <laughs> the first record I bought was a Segovia record. And Nat King Cole. Oh, hold on, Segovia. Andre Segovia. Andre Segovia, yeah. And, Nat, and King Nat King Cole. Did you know then? Oh, I knew, I knew. I, I was, That's all he was going to do. Because I had already played with the big. I got to taste them, you know. And I said, this is it. And Vaughn called me back. Uh, I, I was, before I got home, Vaughn had called my mother. He said, is Bucky coming back from the service? He said, yeah, he's coming back next week. I'm we'll tell him to meet us up in Providence. <laughs> before, before I let you go over there and play Tangerine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I got to ask you something. You're 87. 87. There's obviously no intention to, well, I don't even know retire me. There's no such thing as retirement. No, no. When you look at him, I look at my father who's turning 81 right now. I talked to him about retirement. He said, he gives me, he said I'll give you the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, back, back of my hand, back <laughs> right? There's no such thing. No such thing? What no. are you retiring from? No. To what? Yeah, you're just playing the guitar. It's the greatest thing you can want to do, it. you know, so. You do what you love. It's yeah, great to watch right. you do it, yeah. That's right. So you tell me I could do this for a while before yeah, you throw yeah, me yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, that's it. You stuck with me for a while. <laughs> if I were only half that good, right? Listen, set up Tangerine. Uh, do you need to know anything about it? No, no. It's, just a, it's a song written by Victor Schertzinger. It's a jazz standard. Yeah, we're going to play it. Yeah. Love the standards. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it is an honor for us at One-on-One, uh, -on -one, the Caucus Educational Corporation, the entire public television world, um, and our partners here at the Performing Arts Center, NJ Pack, to have uh, John and the um, legendary Bucky <laughs> Pizzarelli, who uh, has no plans to do anything other than just keep That's doing it. what he loves. Thank you very much. Plain Thank you. Thank you, guys. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. 
and by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJPAC has been provided by the law firm of Gibbons PC, Barnabas Health, TD Bank, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, Josh S. Weston, Cone Resnick, and by the Fidelco Group. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger and NJ.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. This program has been made possible in part by Franklin Templeton Investments.